now, and then we'll just uh, jump into uh, the message, into a few thoughts that we have this morning, and see what God uh, has for us. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for all you've done for us. Thank you for another uh, day that we can gather in your house. Thank you that we were able to get here safely. Uh, please just uh, be with us this morning as we open up your word that we would hear from you. Uh, Lord, I have nothing in and of myself uh, to, uh, to say. Please let it be from you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and that we would be able to uh, learn from your word, that we would be challenged from it, and that we would be able to be uh, changed by your word. Uh, please just be with uh, Pastor Kyle. He's not feeling well. Help him to be able to get to feeling better, that you would work in his life, and that you would just help us to have a great morning in your house, and that we give you all the honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That fly that was messing with Shannon at the end of her song is still up here, so if you see me doing this, there's a fly. I'm not getting charismatic or anything, it's just there's a fly up here. Uh, but we're in the book of Jonah this morning. Uh, this is a familiar book. We know the story. Uh, we don't have to really, uh, we're not really sure, we're not questioning what's happening. We know what the book of Jonah is. We know that God comes to him and says, hey, I want you to go to Nineveh. He doesn't want to go to Nineveh. He gets thrown into uh, the ocean, a uh, big fish, whale, big fish, depending on who you talk to, swallows Jonah. He's in the belly of this fish for three days. He gets spat out. And then he goes to Nineveh, and then we, we know that story. We know everything that's uh, going through that. Uh, and then, um, but there's some things I think we can look in Jonah's life that we have to be careful about, that if we're not careful, we can have that same uh, attitude that Jonah has. Uh, we, I, if we look at it, I would say that we can see here that even though he is obedient, he's a prophet, even though that Jonah follows, eventually follows what God wants him to do, we'll, we can see through the story that Jonah shows a lot of selfishness in his life. Even though he is obedient, eventually obedient, because yes, he does go to Nineveh and he does preach what God told him to preach, we can see selfishness in Jonah's life that we need to be careful, even though, because we as Christians today, we can be obedient to what God is wanting us to do, but if we have the wrong attitude about it, we can still be displeasing to God. You know, if it's, it's like when you have a, a kid, you know, as parents, we have moments with our kids that we ask them to do something, and uh, maybe they are obedient in how they do it, but has anybody had a parent where you tell your kid to do something, like, hey, why don't you clean up your toys, and they just start chucking their toys as hard as they can into like a bin, like if you have a bin, they start throwing them as hard as they can, they're huffing and puffing, they're, they're being obedient, but they're having a very bad attitude in how they're doing it. Do we really appreciate how our kid is behaving or being obedient in that matter? I would say that we do not because we want to be careful that our kid is not like that all the time, not being so having a bad attitude as they're being obedient. I would think that God wants us as his children to have the right attitude as well when we're trying to be obedient to him. If we're not careful, we can have a selfishness attitude. We can have a bad attitude in doing what God wants us to do that we will see in Jonah's life that I just want to point out this morning. We have to be careful we don't have the same attitude that Jonah had. Well, as we come here, again, like I said, the, uh, the, Jonah is a prophet in Israel at this time, and uh, he's, uh, we come here in chapter 1, it says, in Jonah 1, 1, it says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Nineveh. Nineveh is the capital of Assyria uh, at this point. Uh, I guess Nineveh is the city to be in at this time. Assyria is like a, this growing power uh, that is uh, probably north of Israel, north and to the east of Israel. And there, there's different conflicts. We know uh, there's different times we see the Assyrians where they come and they camp around Israel. Uh, there's a story where the angel of the Lord goes and kills 100 and over 180,000 Assyrian soldiers. That There's different times that we see that uh, Assyria is having different uh, conflicts with the nation of Israel. And eventually it is Assyria, uh, the Assyrians, who take Israel into captivity. But we come here, Nineveh is the, uh, the, sit, is the capital city of Assyria at this time. And um, so uh, this is the a big city that, uh, that they are in. And uh, God comes to Jonah and says, hey, I want you to go and to preach into that city. Now, we see here, Jonah obviously does not want to because he, uh, what does he do in verse 3? He says he, re he rose up and to flee unto Tarshish. If you look at a map, people have done that. Tarshish is the exact 
opposite way of Nineveh. He's trying to go the complete opposite direction that he has. You know why? He does not want to go to the Assyrians. He does not want to go to Nineveh. The people that are uh, attacking Israel, the people that are, uh, there's historical records that they are just a very brutal people. When they come in, they uh, they just attack and wipe people out. They're a very big military power. They uh, The city of Nineveh is a very wealthy city because of these military uh, uh, they, they come and they, they capture people and they just take all of their stuff and they just keep gaining wealth because of how uh, terrible of people that they are and they're just very uh, destructive people and there is, is a very wicked city. God says, hey, their wickedness has come up before me. And even though that there's a lot of times that uh, in uh, the Old Testament that God's mainly dealing with uh, Israel and mainly dealing with Judah, we see here that God says, hey, I want you to go and preach to this wicked city that's not my people, but I still want you to preach to the people of Nineveh so that, they, that maybe they would repent. He still is trying to extend his grace to the people of Nineveh. We see that here. He says, I want you to go and preach against them. Destruction is coming their way. I want you to go and preach unto them because their wickedness has come up before me. God cannot stand any type of wickedness. And we see that he says, I want you to go and preach against that. We see here in verse 3, and, and if you jump over to chapter 3, it should be like the next page over. Uh, after uh, Jonah is thrown in the belly of the whale, the belly of the fish, and he comes out, he finally says, okay, Lord, I'll obey you this time. He's, he's had enough of being... Uh, uh, being in the fish, and he's like, oh, fine, I'll obey you now. Because it says, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, arise, go into Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. He says, you know what, you're still going to do it. No matter what, Jonah had to obey because God was not going to preach to the city of Nineveh. He still needed uh, Jonah to do it. And you know what, Jonah says, so he arose in verse 3, and he went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord, and so now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Verse 5, So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. That was not a very difficult uh, message that we see here. Verse uh, verse 3 or verse 4 shows us what God's message was to the city of Nineveh. It says, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. That's all that God wanted Jonah to do. He says, hey, I want you to go to this people. They're this wicked people, and I want you to preach 40 days, and you're going to be destroyed. And you know what? They repented. And we see here that uh, if we come here, we don't, um, it's not a very lengthy message, and, it's, and it, this message is not changed from chapter 1 to now. God still says, hey, I want you to go and preach against them, preach against them. And you know what? Nineveh did not need much convincing that they were a wicked people, did they? They were wicked. They knew of the wickedness in their, in their uh, city. It was not very hard to convince them that they were sinners and that they needed to repent. Jonah didn't have to go down some list and say, this is because of all of this that you're doing, you need to repent. They, they knew that they needed to repent. Even today, there's people that they know that they're sinners, that they don't need, they don't need to be told that they're sinners. They just need to be told what, that, that God loves them. But we see here uh, in, in chapter, if we go over to chapter 4, uh, this, this one point with Jonah is that he was displeased or he was upset that God wanted to, to extend his grace and mercy to the people of Nineveh. Because we come here to chapter 4, it says in verse 1, But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry talking about how that uh, at the end of, of chapter 3 that God uh, repented of the evil that he was going to uh, punish them. He, he didn't do that. He gave them grace. He gave them mercy. In verse 2 of chapter 4 it says, And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repentest thee, of the evil. Jonah, he's upset. He's, he, uh, and we go on in verse 3. Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. He saw that the God's grace and mercy went, uh, went upon this, uh, this wicked nation. They, they, they were told, hey, you need to repent or God's going to destroy you. They repented. And because Jonah saw grace extended to the people of Nineveh, he said, I would rather die than see the people have grace and mercy. 
Is that the right attitude that someone who maybe preached a very simple message and it, re it resulted in a citywide revival should be acting like? That's a very selfish attitude. What I see here is Jonah was trying to decide who should get God's grace and who should get God's mercy. And you know what? That is a very selfish attitude, and we have to be very careful. We don't have that same attitude. Because you know what? There's always, there may be people that we do not like, but we do not have to look at them and say, you know what? I'm not going to give you God's grace and God's mercy. That is a very wrong attitude. We do not deserve God's grace and God's mercy in our own lives, but you know what? It was freely given to us, and we need to make sure that we freely give it to other people. Because you know what Jonah saw? He saw that, hey, that's the people of Assyria. That's the Assyrians. That's people that have been attacking us. That's maybe my enemy. But you know what God said? Hey, I still want to, I still want to save them. I still want you to go and talk to them. There are a lot of people that we do not like. If we're just being honest, we can just point them out. It, it doesn't even, we don't even have to really go far sometimes. We're like, I don't like that person. And sometimes we don't even know why. But it could be in many, many different ways. Matt's downstairs. I was going to use this illustration for him, but I was going to joke with him. Maybe there, we all know Matt's an Ohio State fan. That's pretty obvious. Uh, it would be like, hey, you know, Matt, I need to go talk to that Michigan fan. I, I'm not doing it. I can't, I, can't, I can't go talk to him. They are just a terrible people. I'm not talking to Michigan fans. I'm a North Carolina Tar Heel fan. I was born in North Carolina. I am not a fan. I don't like Duke fans. I don't like, that's just, you come across, there's people that you can say, I just don't like them. But you know, if we're not careful, sometimes we can be like that in real life. Hey, I don't like that person. Uh, they're, they're of a different race. They're of a different uh, ethnicity. If, if we're just being honest, we can come to that same conclusion. If we're, just, if we're not being uh, careful, we can have prejudice against other people. And, and we may be thinking, could God really save them? You know, God says to, to share his word with other people. Do I really want to do that? You know, that person is of a different uh, political party than me. That person's of a different uh, idea, uh, ideology than I have. That person is, we can look at people and because of what they do or who they are, sometimes we can have prejudices against them and be like, I don't like that person. But does that keep us also from sharing God with them? Does that keep us from wanting to share Christ with them, even though God says, hey, I want all people to be saved? Do we in our own minds, without realizing it, look at other people and say, you know what? I could witness to that person, but I don't really think I want to. I don't really feel like God could save that person. I'm going to deem them as unworthy of being saved. If we're not careful, we can have that same attitude of Jonah and you know what he said? I would rather die than see the people of Nineveh receive Christ as their Savior or receive grace and mercy. That is a very horrible attitude. And we have to be careful. We don't have that same attitude where it's like, hey, you know what, that, that person, I don't want to witness to them because what if God actually were to save them? We, we, we may not say that out loud, but do our actions show that? You know, there may be someone, hey, should, should you go and talk to that person? We're like, no, I'm not talking to that person. Can you... Did you see how they look? Did you see what they're doing? Did you see, I know what they have uh, in their yard. I know what they have, what, how they live. I'm not going to go talk to that person. You know, I would rather do anything than to go preach Christ unto that person. We have to be careful we don't have, that we don't have this attitude or we're trying to choose who should receive God's grace and God's mercy. We better not judge others to be. That we, we cannot judge if someone's worthy enough of God's grace. Because if we're being honest, none of us are worthy of God's grace. But that's the beauty of it. God looked at us and says, I love you. You're getting my grace anyway. And that's how we have to look at other people. Even though we may disagree with them, well, there's a, we can leave and look into uh, current events that's going on right now. There's, there's a lot of war. There's a lot of things that are going on that we can look at. That, hey, these people are the enemy. But God still loves them despite what's going on. We can look at people and say, hey, that they're a very wicked person. God still loves them, and God can still change their life. We have to be careful that we don't judge people based on who they are and what they do and say, hey, you know what? There's absolutely no way God's grace could work in their life. That is the wrong attitude to have, and we need to make sure that we're not careful. You know what? We may not, uh, sometimes it might be easy to put Bibles together because, you know what? I'm not going to Croatia. I'll never, you know, you may not meet someone from Croatia you may not be in that, uh, be able to uh, speak Croatian ever or, or visit there. So, you know what? It's easy for me to witness, to be able to be involved in witnessing to people in Croatia. 
but maybe it's a little bit harder to witness to people that are our neighbors, people in our community, people that are at our workplace that we know that we disagree with. But you know what? God is still calling us, hey, we need to have the attitude that, hey, if God is telling us to preach unto others, we need to be obedient with the right attitude. We can't have the attitude that Jonah has where he is being selfish and trying to not witness to the people of Nineveh. If we're not careful, that can, be so, that can just be an attitude that we have. That, you know what? That's a horrible city. I want to go the opposite direction. I don't even want to go to them because of how wicked they are. Do you know what they've done? Do you know how horrible of a person they are? But, you know, God still says, hey, I want you to go to them. I still am trying to show my grace and mercy unto them. Are we obedient? Do we, even though Jonah was obedient, do we have that attitude of, hey, you know what? I'd rather die than see them receive God's grace and God's mercy. How horrible is it that we have that attitude? And we even see his attitude uh, further go on in the end of chapter 4 where uh, he, he's waiting around. You know, he still waits in uh, outside the city. Verse 5 of chapter 4, he says, So Jonah went out of the city, and he sat on the east side of the city, and there, and there made him a booth and sat under it in the shadow till he might see what be, would become of the city. He saw that they were saved. He, after 40 days, he went through preaching. There hasn't been any destruction, but you know what he said? You know, I'm just going to sit around and maybe, maybe something will happen. Verse 6, And the Lord God prepared a gourd and made it to come up over Jonah that it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceeding glad of the gourd. Verse 7, But God prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day, and it smote the gourd that it withered. And it came to pass when the sun did arise that God prepared a vehement east wind and the sun did beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted and wished in himself to die and said, it is better for me to die than to live. And God said to Jonah, doest thou well to be angry for the gourd? And he said, I do well to be angry even unto death. Then said, jo then said the Lord, thou hast had pity on the gourd for the which thou hast not labored, neither madest it grow which came up in a night and perished in a night. And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more, are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle? We see here Jonah's attitude about, uh, he had this attitude where he was, uh, more, uh, he was caring more about a plant than he was caring about people. Are there times that we care more about materialistic things than we care about people around us? How, are we, how, how is our attitude towards that? We see here that Jonah was more thankful for the creation itself than for the creator. He wasn't praising God, saying, God, thank you that you gave me this gourd to kind of cover me. He just said, I'm thankful for this plant. We see here that Jonah, just, no matter what, he was being obedient. He was doing what God was telling him to do. But he just had this bad attitude through life, through the, through the book and he was just so upset. He was like, I'm going to sit here. Maybe they'll be destroyed. Okay, I'm glad that I have a plant. And when God, uh, he gave him the plant, but God also took away the plant. And so much, he's like, I would rather die than be here. All of his attitude, he was just so absorbed with himself, absorbed with the materialistic things that he didn't work for. And he was just so upset and so angry at life that he's like, I'd rather die. We have to be careful that we don't, harbor things where we, we are so upset that we have this attitude that we would rather die than to see God's grace be put on other people. He was so, uh, Jonah was so concerned about the, the materialistic things than he was about people that were around him. We have to be, how is our attitude? What, I, I keep bringing that up. Is just we have to be careful. We can be obedient to God and, and doing what he wants us to do, but are we pleasing to him with our attitude? Do we love others you know, we, we, don't, we can't always love others like we're supposed to, but if we love God properly, God's love can go through us to other people when it needs to. Because you know what? We are human. We all have people that we don't like. But how are we when God says, hey, I want you to witness to that person? Do we have some resentment? Do we have some ill will? We're like, I don't really know if I want to. I'm kind of, kind of, we're, we're already judging that person. Hey, you know what? I don't know if they deserve God's grace and mercy. Again, if we're being honest, None of us deserve God's grace. None of us deserve God's mercy. But you know what? We received it freely. Like I said, there's that fly. We need to freely give that grace and that mercy to others. We have to be careful. What is our attitude? Do we, do we look at things around us and say, you know, I, you know, I can't 
I can't be up. I can't get uh, uh, be inconvenienced with losing out on some materialistic things if it means talking to a person. Do we have these, these, these bad attitudes? We, again, we can be obedient to God. We can follow what God wants us to do, but are we doing it with the right attitude? If everybody would bow your heads, close your eyes as we, uh, Denver comes to do an imitation song. Just a few thoughts just from the book of Jonah as, we, as I was looking at just, if we can be, if we're not careful, we can have that evidence in our own life that if we're not careful, we can look, we can judge other people. We can have this selfishness. We can have this wrong attitude that Jonah had. We need to be careful that we're not like Jonah. We, we do, uh, we're pleasing to God in how we're doing things. Lord, please just uh, be with us uh, this morning. Please just be with the, uh, the words that we've heard, the thought that we've heard this morning. Uh, Lord, please just work in our own hearts. If we have a bad attitude towards other people, if we have a bad attitude towards you and being obedient to what you would have for us, Lord, help us to come to you and submit and try to uh, get our attitude corrected. Lord, help us to uh, love others the way that you, would, that you would love them. Lord, help us to submit to you and be careful of our attitudes. Lord, please just work in our hearts. Help us to honor and please you. Uh, please work during this invitation time. In Jesus' name we pray. Denver's going to sing a song of invitation. Stand with me and consider the words of 414, trust and obey, that really that we